We turn to Jim Newell, a staff writer at Slate covering politics. Jim, good morning. Good morning. As Errol suggested, it, 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 it may have been more than just the travel problems. This may go back to actually the failure to repeal Obamacare. Yeah, I think that Tom Price was on a very short leash with President Trump already because he hadn't been able to get this through. And this may have almost been an excuse to sort of push him over the line. We also heard Errol mention there, were, there are other members of the cabinet right now where there's some travel in question. Steve Mnuchin, Ryan Zinke, what is the fallout from this? Well, that made me wonder because once you saw other stories of other cabinet secretaries having these same issues, it was almost like you can't just eliminate Tom Price to get rid of the problem, so maybe he wouldn't get rid of anyone. But now we're going to see how long this goes. You, you, we did see yesterday afternoon uh, Mick Mulvaney, the head of the Office of Management and Budget, issued a memo saying that this was no longer allowed. You know, everyone must fly commercial no matter how senior you are. Right. Jim, you wrote that, that uh, speaking of Obamacare, uh, that the Obamacare repeal will never die. What did you mean? What I meant was that a seven-year promise doesn't just go away. Yeah. I mean, it's foundational to the identity of the party right now. So we've done, you know, five or six times, it seems, a, a process has gone through. They're going to try this again after tax reform. You mentioned tax reform. That's where the focus has sort of shifted. Um, we saw so much infighting when it came to Obamacare within the Republican Party. Do we expect this to pass easily, or are we in for more of the same? And nothing's ever easy. I mean, we're in for more of the same. The, the question is, I, I think that they recognize they have to get something done here because the failure to repeal Obamacare, for now at least, has really hurt them with their base. So they know that they just have to sort of will this thing over the finish line. But it won't be easy. I mean, every tax break that you eliminate has an army of lobbyists behind it. Can they do it without having Democratic support? They can do it mathematically. It just makes it much harder. You can only lose like, two senators. You can lose about 10 percent of your, your ranks in the House. So it will make it a lot harder to do it on, along party lines. But if you try to get Democrats, that's always a, a risky opportunity. And you would probably have to change the legislation in ways that a lot of people in the Republican caucus would have problems with. The president has talked about trying to do this with bipartisan support and possibly reaching out, though. So, I mean, what's the, what's the possibility of that there, do you think? Well, he has done a couple of rallies. He's gone to the state. He's gone to Indiana, where he did a rally with Democratic Senator Joe Donnelly. He did one in North Dakota with Heidi Heitkamp. So I think he would very much like it, especially since he gets pretty good headlines when he works on a bipartisan basis. I think congressional Republicans are a little less sure. They think that Democrats will just try to squeeze them on this. We, all, we saw some of this bipartisan love, I would say, when Steve Scalise came back this week. Can we expect maybe a little better working together, keeping in mind all that he has gone through and they have gone through? I think that that may just be a nice moment. I, I you know, <laughs> I, well, even when he was shot, it's sad to say yes. they said at the no, time we're going to learn moment. from this and it, it, it didn't seem to be. Yeah. You know, it's just the same structural factors and the same polarization that produces the gridlock is still there. I mean, hopefully this just reminds members that it doesn't always need to be quite so personal. We appreciate right. it. Jim Newell with the very latest. Thank you. Thank you. And tomorrow morning on Face the Nation here on CBS, John Dickerson goes one on one with House Speaker Paul Ryan. He will also speak with Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer and CBS News contributor Bob Schieffer.